Welcome to this series on Customer Cohort and Retention Analysis. In this series, you're going to be learning valuable skills on how to transform, process, and model your data for cohort analysis. This video is just a part one in the series, and it's going to focus on importing and processing your data such that your data will be ready for analysis. I strongly recommend that you download the data and follow along. See you at the end of the video. So this is where you can download the data set from. You will see it here on the UCI machine learning repository. It's called the online retail data. It contains um, information about a real online retail transaction data set of two years. There's another version of this data, but I believe that's for like a period of one year, but um, we are using the one for the period of two years. You're going to find the link in the description below. So you get to read some basic information about the data. Just to move fast, I want to point you to something that is very important. You see under the attribute information, it's very important that if there's documentation about a data set you want to work with, it's very important that you read it, right? So you don't miss out on important information and make mistakes. So you said if the, starts, if the code starts with C, it indicates a cancellation. So I'm going to keep an eye for this when we are cleaning and processing the data in the invoice. As for the invoice number, others are just basic information. It tells you the currency, which is sterling, then date time and other basic information about the data, which will be very useful. To download the data, just click on this and you start downloading the data. I don't want to go through that process. I've already downloaded the data. The data is a bit large. So if I start downloading now, it will take some time. So I pre-downloaded the data and this is what the data looks like. So you have data for the year 2009 to 2010. You have your basic feed here, invoice, stock code, all that information here. Then there's the data for the year 2010 to 2011. So we have our data here. So what's the next step? Let's just head over to Power BI, Power BI and load the data, right? Let's extract the data from Excel into Power Query. So in Power BI, as usual, I can use recent sources or if I'm using recent sources, let's see. Since I've loaded the data before, I have the data here. Or I can choose to click on get data, get the data from Excel workbook, and I can just click on online retail and load the data. So the data may, this may take some time depending on your system, if your system is fast or not. So when you load the data, you're going to find the two sheets that we saw in Excel just now. Just close that, we don't need it anymore. In more space, yeah. So you see the two sheets that are available in the file. So we need the two sheets, right? So I'm going to click on this and click on the second sheet. Or preferably, I would want to have a means to transform this data at once. Because if I should load these two data sets, I may have to do transform the first sheet and transform the second sheet. That's going to be double work, right? So I can see just load this and I'll show you what I mean. So we have successfully loaded the data that we'll be using for our analysis here into Power Query, but we see that we have this data in two separate sheets, right? So we would want a means where, by the time we are done cleaning this particular file, the same steps will also be applied to the second file. So we want to clean and transform our data. We don't want to duplicate or take extra steps or do something um, more than once, right? We don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this second file, for example. I'm going to apply all the steps. And by the time we are done, we're going to convert it into a function and we'll apply it to two sheets at the same time. And that's going to save us a lot of stress. So let's continue. So from the start, we already know that for the invoice number, we know that the type should be text because some of the invoice contain the letter C. If an invoice contains the letter C, as we read in the documentation, 
means that it was cancelled. So we you can just come up here and change the type to text. Well, preferably, if you like using your keyboard, you can also do that right here. This should also be text. Then we see the description, the quantity, we see the date and the price, the customer ID and country. We already noticed um, some problems that I want to take care of. For example, we see here that the customer ID, there are some nodes here. So we would want to take out the nodes. We don't want that, right? The empty values are, let me see, less than 1%. So we have more data that we can work with. So we can take out the nodes. So we just remove. In some cases, you can just come here and click on check the null option. But most times I like to play, be more safer. So I use the remove empty. Because that one checks both the nulls and empty strings just to be safe. So we've done that. Up next, we need a means to remove all the cans, all the, what's the word for it? All the transactions that were cancelled, all the cancellations, we need a, a means to remove all the cancellations. So remember, if we, let me just show you this. If we should go here, or, or instead of doing this, we can, there's a better approach. We can just come here and filter this particular field where we look at where it starts with, that begins with, begins with. Let me see, capital C. Now we see all the transactions that we canceled. We see all the cancellations. These transactions were not completed. So if we don't take them out and we add them up, you realize that these values are negative. They are going to skew the total number of quantity and we don't want that, right? So we take it out of our data completely. So what we can do is, you see what we did here was tables, select rows, it starts with. So what we can do is to just negate this condition. So where is true, we change it to false, and where is false, we change it to true, just change it to not. That means where it does not start with C. And now we, we have been able to take out all cancelled transaction, right? You have the option to rename these steps if you want to remember what you did here. So you can just come here and say remove rows. You can just say cancellations. Remove rows, cancellations. And if you want to add extra information, you can always go to the properties tab and add remove cancelled. That's the cancel. Cancelled transactions. Just click on OK. And now you see that uh, an information icon now shows here. So anybody that's looking at this, let's say you're working with someone else, and the person picks up this file, the person can know that, OK, yeah, something has happened here. Let me see. There's information here for me to read. So that's that. And one important thing, again, is that I for this analysis, I don't need the time. We don't need the time. You don't need it because you want to do a monthly cost analysis. So from this, I believe if you learn this, you can also see how you can do your maybe weekly cohort analysis if that applies to you. So I'll just go back two steps and change this to date. You can do that directly here, or you can just go to the formula bar and type date. That's all. You don't need to do anything. And you realize that the invoice, invoice date will be converted to date. So we've been able to do that. Let's see what else do we need. For this analysis, I doubt if we need like the stock code, the description, what else? We may need the country, right? We may need it, but we'll, we will not import the country for this analysis. So we're going to just, we're going to select some countries. And before we do that, did I say select some countries? <laughs> and we spoke there. So we're going to select the columns that we need and focus on that for this analysis. And for first step, we're going to 
multiply the quantity by the price, this is going to give us a sales amount. So you can just select on the two columns, go to add column, then you go to standard and you click on multiply. This is going to add a new column for you, right? So you can just go one step, just go back to this step and say sales amount. Should I say sales amount? Yeah, I think this works fine. We started multiplication. You may want to rename it to inserted sales amount. Great. So we have our sales amount. You can for the data type, for example, you, you saw that Power Query specified the type as number. You can choose to change this to currency. Yeah. The currency type. So if you use currency type, you will need to remove this second type here so that you don't have issues. And now you see it's showing us dollars, telling you that okay, the type is currency. You can always do this from here, but I've gotten used to using this one. Anyone that works for you, right? Anyone that works for you. Then let's see, let's see what else. What else can we do? What else can we do? And just to be safe, just to be safe, we want to, we're going to remove all rows where the sales, where the sales amount is zero. If the sales amount is zero, there's a strong chance maybe the person was given a discount, but we don't have that record of discount here, right? So we would want to play safe. We don't know what has happened. We don't have context on that. So we're going to remove the data where the sales amount at least should be greater than zero. I'm sorry, we're going to keep rows where the sales amount is greater than zero. So we do greater than, at least the sales amount should be greater than zero. We don't want zero, right? We do that and that's fine. So you can always, I, I recommend recommending you, I recommend renaming your steps right because you don't know when you will need this in the future and you don't you won't remember what you did here so sales we do greater greater than zero sales greater than zero great we have what we need right here so now we can just select the columns that we need you can choose your columns manually here or you can just go to home and click on choose columns so for this analysis we need the let me see we don't need the invoice we don't need this description we need the quantity we need the price we need the sales amount we need the customer id very important and we need the invoice date then click on okay Let's say you want to do the cohort analysis, maybe for countries. So you can, maybe you want to apply filters to your report using the country column. You can also include that. Now that I think about it, let me just include it in case we decide to do that later on. So click on the gear icon, then just click on country. And now we have this right here. So we have quantity, invoice date price, customer ID, um, that, that's a country, that's quantity. So this is um, country and this is a sales amount. So in my book, I believe we've done a good job. We've been able to just do something simple that cleans our data for us and this works fine. But now we imagine if we have to go back and start applying the same steps to this particular file. That's a problem, right? We already know these files have the same number of columns. We already know that the data is almost the same. So what we can do now is to change this, convert this into a function. Yeah, so how do we do that? Super simple. So let me duplicate this. I've duplicated this and you need to go to the advanced editor. 
and look at the steps that have been applied. These are all the steps that have been applied. So that little note I added that time, the note is also here. So which is also good in case you want to look at this data right now. So we don't want to import this data. What we want to use is I want to take, a, take the data from each sheet and clean it, right? So that means we don't need this step. We're not bringing the data from the source. We are not going to be loading the data from the sheet, which is what you see here. This step would have happened already. We only want to get the data that is coming from that sheet and push it as a parameter to this right here. So I want to push the data from each sheet. This is the, the sheet we just cleaned is for the year 2010 to 2011. So what you can do is to go up. So you start with your bracket, just equal to. Now we want to pass the name of the parameter, right? So we, we can call this data sheet. Data sheet as as table actually as table data sheet as table then we can now reference the parameter we just called call it data sheet yeah this is it data sheet now you can worry about renaming most of these steps here but i don't think i would like to rename anything right now so i'll just click on done now you see that the other files that we have here as tables are showing up as examples right that's what we want we want to be able to just take a data clean it but we are not going to be doing that right here so we're going to be re renaming this to clean sheet just to differentiate that this is a function you can just put fn or fx yeah so this is a function that does our job for us. We can now go back to the previous step and we're going to rename this to fact sales, or you can call it online sales, whichever one works for you. So I'm going to be removing these steps carefully. The promote header steps, I don't need it. The navigation steps, I don't need it anymore. Now you see the file that we were able to import. We have the year, the data, this is what we need the most. We need this. So just to apply some features, you can, let me just select this, remove all other, but what you need importantly is this, this kind. You want to focus on sheets only, click on okay. And now you have sheets only. Up next, you can remove other columns, just select these two and remove other columns. Now you have the data and you have what? We have the sheet name. So how do we apply our function? Now it's, the way to apply our function is to go to the advanced. So we go to add column, then invoke custom function. Now we've already created a function, then we can call this uh, data. I think it's the column called data already. So we'll call this plain data. Clean, clean data. Yeah. So what we can now do is to call the function we want to use. And remember, we are not going to be using a table here. We're going to be using a column because we know that our data is in this column, right? So we reference the data column and click on OK. Now we have our cleaned data. So we can remove the data column. And what we can do next is to expand this column, columns, right? So if expand this, now you get to see everything. The two files have been combined into one. You can filter each file to see the data that you want to see. Do you want to see for the first file or you want to see for the second file? So you can choose to filter for either of the two. This is going to take some time since the file is large, so I'm going to skip that step. Or should I be patient? Play patient. So I'm done waiting for you. It may be some second or a second, but I waited for some time for the data to load again. And now we can filter between the two periods that we have in our data set, right? 
to see that, but there's no point doing that. So I'm just going to remove this column. I don't need it anymore. Now I can change the data type for each of these columns. Um, quantity is a whole number. Invoice date is a date. Price. Price is currency. Where are you? I can see you. Oh, yeah, that's, that's fixed decimal. Then customer ID is a whole number. Country is text and sales amount is also fixed decimal. Great. We have our data. We can now go back and delete this. We don't need this, right? We just needed it to create our function. So delete that step and we have our sales data. Awesome. Now, this is step one. For step two, we are going to be creating a customer table. In that customer table, we want to know the first time the customer had a transaction, right? When was the first time that this customer bought a product from us? So to do that, we can just duplicate this table. We can reference it or duplicate it. Let's reference it. So we've referenced that table, and now we are going to rename this customize. So this table is going to contain unique information. It's going to contain the unique ID of each customer and the first date that customer bought from us, right? That'll be the first time. We want to know the first time the customer bought from us. And from there, we can know how long the customer has stayed using our service. So it's actually pretty straightforward. Go to transform and do a group by. Then for the group by, I want to group by the customer ID and the new column is first transaction month. Ideally, it should be first transaction date, but you see why I'm naming it first transaction month. Then from here, we can find a minimum. Well, we find a minimum invoice date. This is the first time the customer bought from us. Click on OK. So we are done waiting and the data has loaded successfully. So initially when I started using Power BI, I thought maybe if I referenced a previous um, table or a previous query, the performance is going to improve, but that's not true. This time you reference this, let's say you reference a table here in the Power Query, everything is still going to happen. It's still going to run from beginning to the end. That's one of the issues with Power Query. So you think the, the data is here, let me just reference it now. Every, each of the table, if you reference this with four or five tables, everything is still going to run and it's going to take some time, which is why it's important you know how query folding works, right? So if you've not watched my video on my videos on query folding, I've been running the challenge, you should, I think there should be an icon at the top that you can just click on. It's going to show you the playlist where all the query folding videos are. This query folding doesn't work for flat files like the one we are working with right now but it works for databases such that it makes it easy for you, right? And your query is going to improve the performance of your query and you won't have to be running into, into issues where you wait like I just did. So let's continue. Now we have the first transaction month after doing our group by, but what we have here is the date, right? First transaction date. So we're going to transform this column and change it into Right? Each of these is going to be the start of the month, start of the month, instead of the date in the month, right? So what you can do, normally you would want to add column. You can just go here, add column, click on this and click on date. And this is going to give you like start of the month. But the problem is that you are adding a new column, right? You're adding a new column. So personally, we don't want to add a new column because if you add a new column, we will also have to remove this column that we have right here. So what we can just do is to transform the first transaction month column, okay? So we realize that this is still loading the data and all that. I'm not going to be waiting for all that to happen. I'll just copy this. 
and remove this inserted step. Then I'm going to be start inserting my own steps manually. So I'll run table table transform column. So the first um, parameter here is to pass the table. So we know that the table is grouped rows. That makes our job easy. Coming just had a little mistake. Let me correct that. So it's reference grouped rows, grouped rows. Then the transform operation. How do we want to transform this column? So we pass each. So we I copied this earlier when I applied that step. That's date start. You can actually type it out manually if you want to. Date the start of month. That's for each date you want to get the start of month. And the let me see. And you have to pass this actually as an operation. So this is not going to work like this. You have to pass it as a list. So if you're passing this as a list, the first thing you want to pass is the column you want to transform. So this is a column. You know, the column is first transaction month. Copy and paste without the brackets, without the bracket, comma, then this is our transformation. We want to transform this. So we take out, yep, start of moment. And let me see, we, you have to close this bracket. Yep, and finally, we have to specify, if you want to specify the data type, so you can just do date type and click on OK. It's fine if you run into issues, really. It's fine if you run into issues. So we see that the transformation has worked. So this is just a simple step on how to transform your data. If you don't want to add multiple columns, remove column and add columns, this is very efficient. So we have the first transaction month for each customers now. And that's just the information we need here from each customer. What we can do next is we have our sales table, we have our customers table. Next step would be to just create a date table. We already know that the year starts from 20, I believe, 20, 2009. The year starts from 2009 and ends in 2011. So we can use this to create our date table. So to create our date table, it's actually pretty straightforward. We are going to create a blank query. So we, we have a blank query, and in that blank query, we're going to, and to make this easy for you to follow along, let me just create this one after the order. So we know that the date is, let me see, date, date so we're going to pause the year 2009 january 1st and yes so this is going to give us our start date start date and i can just duplicate this and call it end date So for the end date, we know it's 2011, right? So we can just rename this to 2011. So we are changing this to 2011. And remember, we have to use December 31st, 31st December 2011. So we have our start date and we have our end date. We can now use these two values to create our date table. So we start a blank. Query, we said this is equal to, and we're going to be using a list. So this is what a list looks like in Power, in Power Query or M programming or how you put, whatever you want to call it. So what we have to do next is number from, number from, remember we're going to use the start date, then double dots, double dots, so I'm creating a list of values from this 
from the start date to the end date. Then we also use number from. Now this is going to be end date. And this should work fine. Yeah, it's working fine. Now we have a list of dates. Remember, if you're working with Excel, sometimes you see how Excel converts your dates to numbers, right? That's what we just did here with number from. The dates that we had earlier, we converted them to numbers. Then we now created a series of number of numbers from the start date to the end date. So what we can do is if you convert this to dates, it's going to give us the dates that we're working with. So you need to convert this to a table. Click on OK, and this gives you a table. So we can call this dates. I will just rename, we just renamed this. Then we can now change the data type for this table to let me see date. So we're going to have a series of dates starting from 2009 to 2011. So now we have our date. So for this analysis, since this is a monthly course analysis. I'm going to focus on just adding one date. I'm not going to be having too many dates, creating a very huge calendar table. So I'll just click on, on date, go to add column, go to date, then I'll click on go to year, click on start of month. You get right? You see why that start of month was important in the previous step? It's very important because we're going to use this to do some, some of our analysis. So we can now rename this to team date. We are, not, we are not going to load the start date and the end date. So we have our dates, we have our customers, and we have our faxes table. So what we need to do next is to just load the data into our data model. So we've extracted the data, we've transformed the data, and now we want to load the data into our data model. If we load it, then we have to model our data, right? So let's do that. Click on home and then click on close and apply. So if you click on close and apply, Power, the Power Query is going to load the data into your data model. So we have been able to load our data into, we've been able to load our data into Power BI. So the next step will be to model our data, right? To make sure that the right relation, the, the tables have the right relationship between each other and they are speaking to each other the right way. Without this, we are going to run into issues when we start creating our measures, which is also part of the data modeling process. So we already see that there's a relationship between the customer's table and the fact sales table, which is fine because it's using the customer ID. We, we need to create a relationship between the date table and the invoice date. And that's the basic step. So we've been able to do create relationships and that's fine, everything is working well. And it's important, you notice that I had to do this in Power Query. It's important to do some of these transformations in Power Query. And if you can push some of the transformations to your data source, that would be great. Because doing it with that, um, it's not very efficient, except if you have to, don't do that, for example, I push most of the work to Power Query, but now I'm going to be adding a custom column using DAX just to show you that there are some things that can be pushed. I can do this in Power Query, but I enjoy doing this here. And I also wanted to show you, right, what it looks like. So I can format this column. I want this column to read, use the short date format. And for the start of month, I will format it such that it reads March 2021, March 2001, you get, instead of giving me the whole, oh, that's a mistake. I should do this. This should be a short date format, but the start of month should follow the month year. I could have used a month year format, but like maybe create month year journey, but you have to be looking for how to sort it by another column. So I prefer using this method. So up next, I'll go to the fact sales table. Um, the currency is showing here as Naira because yeah, Nigeria. So I may want to 
change the currency later on? Is it Euro? Is it sterling and stuff? But I'm not going to, I can just say general currency for now. If I don't want it to show any Naira dollar or anything, so just dollar, just dollar. You can always change this by the way. So my, but my focus right now is on adding a new column. So I'm going to be calling this new column months, months since first transaction. Months since first transaction. You see now we don't have to figure out what the first transaction date is because we already know that right that is in the customer table. We don't have to start writing some complex tags to get that. You can use the date difference function to want to find the difference between two dates. So the first date is going to be remember that the first, the first transaction date is in a different table, right? So to reference that function that is in a different table, we use the related function. Then customer first transaction month. That's good. Um, let me expand this a bit. So that is readable. So we have this related and comma. So we have we need a second date now. Remember, remember we created a relationship. We created a relationship between the fact sales table and the date table, right? Because that's a table that contains the start of month. We don't have that here in the fact sales. Table. So what we can do is just say related. So we just use the start of months in the dim date table. And finally, we want to calculate this difference in months. Close the bracket and just click on OK. Then close this. Now, months is first transaction. So where you see zero here is telling you that this is the first time this customer is buying this product, right? This is the first month the customer is buying this product. So you would want to see, so we have zero. Zero is new customer. You should always remember that. And that's the first month. Remember we are doing this on a month level. If you are doing this on a week level, it may look a bit different, right? So we have zero. One, so that's one month later, two months later, 10 months later, then you get to see a long list up to, what's the maximum value here? I can't see that my screen is a bit small. So we have a whole number of months here. So we can drop this individual and see what it looks like. So we've been able to do this. It's important you do this because it's going to become relevant later on, right? And now we can just go back to our screen where we want to perform our analysis. So I like keeping my... This is the end of part one. Make sure you come back for part two, which I'll be uploading the next few days. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. See you.